Hi, my name is Kenny Anderson. I'm Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to IMPACT. Each week I have an opportunity to share with you information about community resources and some of the great things that are happening in our city. One of the wonderful things about my job is that I get to meet a lot of different people who are doing a lot of really great things in the city. And today we have some individuals that we're going to introduce you to who are going to tell you something about a program that you may or may not be aware of. But I know I'm excited about learning a lot more about what they're doing today. You know, the month of uh, May is National Drug Court Month. And today we have several guests here with us to talk about that. Welcome to each of you. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Corey Williams is uh, a juvenile court liaison and family, court, uh, family drug court supervisor. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. It's good to have you. We're going to talk a lot more about what you all do in just a few moments. Okay. Uh, Tanita Phipps is director of Madison County DHR. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. And Tyron Newton is assistant director of DHR. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. It's good to have all of you. And I know I was really excited because I just wanted to know more about <laughs> what this court was all about. It's National Drug Court Month, and I think that we first need to establish the concept of what drug court is so that people can kind of have an understanding of why we have a national month to recognize this particular thing. Okay. Well, um, drug court, now, this is now, May is National Drug Court Month, and drug court is a specialty court. And when I say specialty court, um, you have drug court, you have traffic court, you have mental health court. So, uh, it was established years ago, um, and actually who started our family drug court is um, the, um, Judge Sherrod. Mm. Um, and now here in Madison County, we have two um, drug courts. We have adult drug court, which is um, the presiding judge over that is Judge Hunley, and here in the juvenile drug court is Judge Richardson. And drug court, the mission of drug court is to uh, help reduce substance abuse among parents and at the same time to uh, protect the well-being and safety of the children. Which I guess is a connection with DHR. Yes, yes sir. Uh, which is kind of a natural blend. Uh, you all are in the business, for those that don't know, of child protection and child welfare issues and other kinds of family related types of things. Um, I know that there's also a lot of um, lack of understanding as it relates to what uh, DHR represents. So let me ask you all to talk a little bit about what DHR essentially represents as a community resource. Well, as Corey mentioned, our primary focus is to uh, protect the children as well as the adults um, of uh, Madison County. We provide um, child welfare services and we also provide food assistance and other programs as well as child support. So we work with the entire family, but in the area of child welfare where it coincides with the drug court. Our primary, primary focus is to provide services to the families so that we can work with them to ensure the children's safety and hopefully enable the, the uh, parents to be drug free. Now, uh, refresh my memory uh, if I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> and, um, or you may want to be kind on the host. <laughs> uh, I'll just let you decide. Okay. But I remember when Judge Sherrod started this court several years ago and I remember it being, as I would best describe it, kind of a compassionate response, a mid-level response to intervention. You know, you could easily take somebody who's using and throw them in jail, and that'd be another person in the system. Or you could do something from an intervention perspective to try to create some kind of level of engagement that protects children, but also helps parents deal with the substance abuse challenges that they may, may be facing. Am I pretty much on target as to why that's uh, somewhat of why this court exists? You're, you're exactly right why it exists. Um, to help these um, parents or caregivers who is struggling with an addiction, whether it be um, alcohol or whether it be marijuana or, or cocaine or any type of drug, substance yeah. abuse. So these are nonviolent offenders, essentially, people that may be strung out on some kind of drug, addicted to some type of substance, who have a family, and the fact that they're using creates some kind of a problem. And is it also that these individuals have a drug charge against them, or is it a little bit of both? It's probably a little bit of both. Um, family Drug Court, we work with parents who have a, a, dr a drug problem, and we connect them with resources, uh, whether it be drug treatment, 
and also family drug court where they meet um, on a biweekly basis with the family court drug judge um, holding them more accountable. Yeah. And But at the same time, it's providing them resources to um, develop protective capacities, parenting skills, and also to um, get a job. So we try to do um, a lot for them and to hopefully return our kid back to them safe yeah, you see, to me, this is a true, a true rehabilitative function of somebody who gets in trouble with the system. And uh, it gives them an opportunity to really have a second chance to kind of recover from what they've been experiencing and to get back on the right path. Um, and I'm a, a huge advocate for redemption. You know, I just think that people should be given a chance, Correct. especially when the offense that they have experienced is kind of a low level offense and is easily addressed if you provide the kinds of things you're talking about. Um, treatment, ongoing accountability measures. Um, Tanita, you mentioned food assistance and support, some basic things that people may need because there are other challenges that these families sometimes are experiencing. And there are numerous services that can be provided to them. So, you know, with the families being able to voluntarily participate in the program, they are at an advantage, you know, to have the support of DHR, the courts, as well as the community so that, you know, they can achieve success by participating in the drug program. So it is giving them a second chance. Yeah. Tyron, you've been with uh, DHR for a long time. I, I want to just yes, tackle sir. this. Since you guys are here, I'm going to take advantage of this. <laughs> I want to tackle this myth of DHR as the boogeyman out to get your kids. Oh. Take your kids away from them. You guys hear that a lot, I'm sure. Oh, yes, oh, yes. We do. yes, we do. But actually, the mission of DHR is to keep children safe and at home whenever possible. So we work hard to keep the children at home with the parents. And if they can't remain with the parents, then we work hard with the parents to get them back. So there's a lot of access to resource issues. There's a lot of decision making involved, yes, personal responsibility issues. I mean, there's a whole level of stuff that's going on in the context of the work that's going on. For example, with the drug court, most of the participants are actually in a drug rehab program to, to, as a tool to help them. Right. And, and I think that's a great thing because I think that when people have access to treatment, they have an opportunity to be oh, healed yes. and yes. to recover and to become whole again. Um, and you have to have hope. You know, oh, you yes. know, there are some difficult days ahead, as one might say. You got to have hope oh, yeah. uh, that the person that you're working with can move beyond the limitations that they may be experiencing at that moment. True. And that's got to be a big part of it. Um, do you work with, is there a certain age limit for the court? Um, it's, it's not a certain age limit, however, we work with parents, you know, um, whether it's parents or legal custodians. So can you work with like a 15 year old? If they were a parent. And, we, and a parent, because 15 year olds sometimes are parents. We, we have drug problems. You're, yeah. you're definitely right. And, and two, and we have um, um, children who have drug problems also, and we have resources where we, um, in the community, where as far as counseling, drug treatment, and also for children also. So how does that person, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to determine what the line of connection is between you know, the court, DHR, and maybe other services. Is a person arrested first, and then they're brought before the judge, and a decision is made about where to send them, or do they apply for the program? How does that all happen? Well, in family drug court, um, um, the parent doesn't necessarily get arrested. We may receive a report, and uh, once we uh, investigate that, and if we do see a drug problem, we'll send them for a drug assessment. And at that time, a referral to drug court may come in that this person, you know, probably needs drug court. And the goal is to provide all those resources up front. Well, it may be costly up front, but the the whole premises of drug court is to put those resources in place up front in hopes that you won't see them again mm. so um so basically um we would just um investigate it and a referral will be made and if it's appropriate for drug court we'll bring it to the drug court team which consists of the uh, drug court providers whether it's new horizons bradford and also um the juvenile court judge uh, family 
juvenile court judge, Judge Richardson, and we'll determine if this is a good candidate uh, for drug court. Well, you're bringing back flashbacks for me. New Horizons, <laughs> Bradford. I was a, uh, after adolescent aftercare um, worker with them for a period of time, uh, many many years ago. So those are some of my old stomping around. And those are our um, team team members and partners. So we yeah. work good with those. Yeah, and it's good to build those kinds of alliances because that's a big part of what's happening here. You're really talking about a response that many people have understood really works, and that's a shared approach from different resources in the community. It's not just the court, it's DHR, it's the treatment facility, mm -hmm. whichever one that might be. Um, there are different points, uh, maybe a mental health professional in there somewhere, you know, depending on what's going on. You have this sort of multidisciplinary team approach exactly. to addressing the person's issue, which has to be incredibly valuable to you. It is, and although we have the providers, the, the um, Parents can have anyone that they see as a support to them as part of the team, um, whether it's their minister, you know, their parents, neighbors, whoever they feel is uh, a support system to them. So it's not just DHR, the courts, and the providers, and the cards are not stacked against them. You know, they have all of the support systems that they feel will be supportive to them in helping them to um, achieve success. Yeah. Speaking of success, how successful has this program been? You have a pretty good track record with this program in terms of just moving people forward? Well, we feel that it has been, been a success. Uh, one of our goals is for clients, all clients to leave with a job and also being drug free. Um, and, and, and we have a graduation coming up and we have two graduates who will be graduating. Both have a job and both have been drug free. So we um, are, our results is showing and uh, we are looking forward to this, continuing this program and also working in collaboration with all our providers. Yeah, that's gotta be great. I mean, uh, a great sense of accomplishment to know that all of the pieces have come together. You know, a person's gotten, there's been intervention, person has had some options, those options have worked, the person's now graduating from the program, the person has a job, I mean, they're gonna be, you know, in many ways reconnected with their families, you know, and, and start over again. I mean, it's gotta be really, really um, good. It, it, and, and gratifying. It, it is gratifying to see where you come in and where you, and how you become. Mm -hmm. um, to see clients and to grow is very gratifying. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you have a situation where you have people coming back to you who've been in the program before? Is there a recidivism challenge there also? Occasionally, you know, with drugs, I mean, that is a major addiction, you know, to conquer. So we do have um, candidates who occasionally relapse and, you know, we're there to support them. The program has incentives, so it works with the, the client where they are, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that their, their goals are achievable. But, you know, with any addiction, um, you have those situations where you will have relapses and, and we're there, you know, to support them through that. Yeah, I think that's the important thing. It's not giving up on people. It's True. being available for people, that's recognizing great. that this is a journey. You know, it's not a destination. It's they don't get cleaned up and then everybody doesn't get cleaned up and it's, you know, the end of the story. It's like there has to be ongoing support mechanisms in place. It has to be a job, you know. Correct. You have to create stability in the person's life in order to offset some of those challenges that they face. Exactly. All right. um, I wanted to ask what graduation means, actually, not in terms of, um, you know, what the ceremony is, but mm -hmm. how does a person know that they've graduated? What have they done? Okay. Graduation means that they, uh, they've completed um, drug court is 30, um, 36 weeks. Okay. That's a pretty good length of time. It's a good length of time. Wow. However, some can complete uh, before then. Some, it can take longer than then. Okay. But it's set up for a 30-week, six-week program. Hmm. And, um, and, it's, and it's a co collaboration with the drug treatment providers mm -hmm. and also with Madison County DHR as far as recommendations. And when they complete that, um, when they get, complete that and... Um, then they're set up for graduation. But then also after graduation, we do monitor them for a while, and we've put in a component where we do um, just random things just to make sure that they're still on track. 
I was going to ask about follow up, mm -hmm. uh, and is that is the length of time determined by the situation, or is there a standard? It just a, it, we do everybody individualized yeah. and depends on where they're at and um, and how they're progressing. Mm -hmm. So it's really not a um, set time frame. You know, we have 36 weeks, but it just depends on, you know, you have some people who come into the program who are ready to um, work on their issues. But some it takes longer. So we have to do an individualized treatment. Yeah, which is kind of good, too. I mean, you kind of meet people where they are. Mm -hmm, correct. And you're not creating a cookie cutter expectation where you just drop the template over them and everybody's yeah. supposed to be the same level, same time. Everybody doesn't have the same issue. Exactly. Everybody doesn't have the same skill set. So you got to really be able to, you know, be flexible Correct. in that process. And as Corey said, once they graduate from the program, that doesn't mean that we automatically close their case to the department. We will continue to work with them, monitor the situation, do uh, random drug screens, and still provide whatever um, support they need so that we can ensure that they have reached a point where their, their case can be safely closed. Yeah. What about ongoing family involvement through the treatment process? Uh, are there points of contact with the family where they're in, involved in the program apart from and with the person that's going through treatment? Or is it just they're kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting for the f person to be finished and then they get back engaged with them? No, we, we definitely encourage family um, support involvement. It can be your family, it can be friends, um, because you need some, some type of support because some of our clients d doesn't have family. And so we put different supports around them because to get through the journey of being on um, drugs and to actually to be drug free, you're going to have to have some support. We will connect them with um, AA and NA, whether they get sponsors, because um, that's a big component too of the program. Once you get down until the last um, you know, portion of the program, that sponsorship is very important because after we get through, after our aftercare program working with them, we want them to have other supports in the community and, um, and those sponsors are big. So, you know, we encourage family, friends, church members, anybody who has a good, you know, relationship for them. And, and that's really important too because there's always the question of what happens after. And, you know, you keeping track on them is only one part of that, but you're not with them every day and you're not really monitoring them, you know, 24 seven. So, you know, what choices are they making? What resources do they have available to them? What kind of support structures do they have available to them? It becomes a very important part of that. No different than any other situation. If you graduate from college, what happens next? You got a degree, yeah, exactly. now what do you have? You know, right. and, and what, do you, what structures do you have in place to help you get to that next level? So, um, or, or you've gone through surgery or, you know, whatever the circumstance, you always need that next level of care. And to know that people who go through the program have that, I think further ensures the likelihood of their success, which is That's really, right. really good. Yeah. This is a great program. What is it about um, this program, something perhaps that, that you know from the inside that makes this a really, really uh, important program that people may not know of or be aware of that you'd like to tell the audience today and to say that, um, you know, I've been a part of this and this is what I've learned about it or I understand it to be and what it represents because it really seems like it represents something very important to the stability of even this community. Because you could e easily have a situation where you have a um, drug arrest heavy environment where you're just stacking jails with prisoners who have, you know, low level offenses. And then what do you have, you know, as a result of that? But to me, this kind of shows a community that is concerned about people who have problems and thinks about it enough to bring a whole collection of resources to the table to say, Let's work on this. Let's be proactive in dealing with this. Let's be compassionate even in dealing with this. So just from the inside, working from the inside, what, what have you learned? What have you seen? What do you know? I think one of the things that's uh, important for the community to understand is no one wants to be involved with DHR, um, certainly, but uh, if they do have to become involved with DHR from the child abuse and neglect side, it's not um, the end of the world. You know, we're there to support them. We have services that can be provided. And the drug court program is one of those avenues where, you know, the judge is very supportive. Um, you have the social workers that work along with the drug court and the, commu com the community providers 
that are all working closely with them to show that, you know, everyone may have uh, bad luck from time to time and find, fall down on their luck, but it's not the end of the world, and we're there to support them and help them to achieve success. Mm, that's good. And I will pick it back on what she said. It's not the end of the world, and um, and drug court is it's a compassionate court. It's, um, it's a court that, that you're given the opportunity to... Um, you know, work with different resources and and to, you know, get over your drug addiction. And it is a compassionate court, um, different from dependency court and also um, criminal court. Mm -hmm. And so you're, this is a second opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really work with our clients and, and try to, you know, help them so they can be better parents and so they can start a generation of with their kids on down the road. I think that's important once again of uh, both what you and Tanita said that there's a level of care it seems that really has the potential to reach people's hearts which sometimes makes all the difference in the world to mm -hmm. know that somebody cares. Um, that old saying that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you could have all kinds of qualifications and training and education degrees and until people really feel your heart and that you're not just out to get me, but you're out to help me and uh, recognizing that, you know, hey, I've, I've fallen on hard times, you know, and the experience I have. And this is the way I think about it. And I keep myself humble this way. The experience that I see other people having, I could have that experience, too. Exactly. exactly right. And, you know, how many steps am I away from having that same experience, given the right set of circumstances or the wrong set of circumstances? So um, it just makes me more aware of the sensitivity that needs to be a part of these kinds of situations. And I'm very thankful that this court exists. I'm glad that the month of May is a National Drug Court Month. And I'm glad that we can say as a city that we have this kind of a resource here um, to make that happen. And we're, we're excited and, um, you know, to have a specialty court such as um, um, Family Drug Court and to have those resources made available. And, you know, we're looking forward to the community to keep, you know, getting behind this. And, um, and you know, we're just excited about National Drug Court Month and we're excited about our graduation and our two graduates that's graduating yeah. this month. Yeah, it's got to be great. I mean, it could be no uh, no better or not much better or at least equally as good as any other graduation that is, is going to exist okay. uh, during this time of year, which is a big graduation season. So to know that there are all kinds of different graduations going on, that's a good thing because yeah. I like to celebrate success. Oh, yeah. Which is good. Uh, Corey Williams, he's Juvenile Court Liaison and Family Drug Court Supervisor. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you. It's good to have you here, man. And uh, you guys come back and let us know how things are going. We, we yeah. definitely would. Tanita Phipps is director of Madison County DHR. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And uh, Tyron Newton is the assistant director of DHR. And you guys work in tandem on a regular basis. <laughs> we do. Yes, we do. Along with Corey. Very oh, good. yes. Very good. Well, thank you for all that you do. Is there a phone number that you'd like to give for more information or? Well, for more information for Madison County DHR, you can call area code 256 Four two seven sixty two hundred, and as far as family drug court or adult drug court, you can call two five six four two seven six three zero two. Okay, that's outstanding. Thank you very much for being here and sharing this great information. I know I've learned a lot, and I know that people are watching will learn a lot also. So thank you. Thank, thank you for thank you. having us. All right, the month of May, National Drug Court <laughs> Month, and I uh, hope that you've learned as much as I have. As always, it's been a pleasure to be with you, and I hope that you'll join us for our next edition of Impact. As always, I'm Kenny Anderson. I hope that you have a great day. We'll see you soon.